good afternoon, everyone. Today I'm talking to the creative team behind the short film, The Stunt. It's a collaboration of three production companies. Uh, Neil Scholes, the director from Valkyrie Beowulf, and Ben Shockley from Drop of a Hat Productions, and Paul Kavanagh from Green Book Projects. Yeah. And I'm Robert McRae, Managing Director of New World Film Finance, and director and producer from Umbrella Factory Film. Uh, firstly, Paul, we're going to go over to you. Yeah, really go on. <laughs> You're first in the firing line. Yeah. Tell the audience a little bit about the story and where the idea came from. Um, well, the idea initially came from Ben. Ben had this idea about these two um, actors. One was a stuntman. And it was a um, similar storyline, but uh, a more upbeat, um, comedic storyline. Mm. And uh, he showed it to me and we were, we were pretty bored. And we just said, why don't we just write it? You know, we, so I... I, I thought you meant you were pretty bored with the script. <laughs> That's no, what I thought I was, as well. I, I was bored. really bored with the yeah. story. I went, I've got, to be, I've got to bring my genius in. <laughs> Wears his heart on his sleeve. Yeah. So <laughs> I brought my genius in and we rewrote it just a little bit. I mean, we changed the ending, of course. You know, mm. It was a much darker ending and a darker beginning. In fact, it was dark. Mm. Just dark. Mm. Wasn't it? it was Altogether. just dark. So, yeah, that was how it was done. About... Um, I think, was it November, December of last year? Well, actually, the original yeah. idea came about four years ago. Right. Where a friend of mine, Sean Williamson, the yeah. actor, and myself uh, wanted to coax uh, another friend of ours back into the business. And we thought, well, let's write a short script and see if he's interested. Anyway, this is before um, COVID, and I wrote it and unfortunately shelved it. We couldn't do anything with it, obviously. Um, he basically said, write a script with two actors set it in a garage originally, which mm -hmm. is what it was. So I wrote it. As Paul said, it was much more sort of comedic in a way, wasn't yeah, it? and it involved um, stunts and it was on a film set type of situation. Yeah, it was, yeah that was where the live feed was going to go. That was the original idea. Um, but when Paul came in, then he decided, uh, well, I guess you went, this is, I want this a bit darker. Yeah, I think it which was Which he did, better. and I just wanted to get it made because I was like... This is ridiculous. I've got this script. I've had it for several years. Um, let's just do something with it. Mm -hmm. And th th when Paul said, yeah, we were kind of bored, and we just said, well, let's, yeah, let's, do let's, let's make something. Did the final script resemble the initial script that you did? or The uh, script was quite different, really. The only, the only similarity, really, was that there was an actor and a stuntman in it, pretty yeah. much. The, yeah. Quite a bit of the plot was different. I mean, mm. I had... It was more of a, a, a quiz that I'd set up um, mm. where he was being quizzed, the actor, to see how much he knew about stunts. Mm. This was... And, and there was a, a question in there to trip him up, to make mm. him look bad. Um, and that was, and it ended up on a, on a, on a nice note. But mm. I didn't really like the ending. Um, and when Paul came in, he's had much more experience of writing than me. Um, when he um, showed me the script, I was like, no, we can't do that. No, I said it was great. <laughs> no, I said it was great. And, and that's when um, Paul yeah. contacted, contacted Neil. Yeah, Neil. so over to you, Neil. Neil Skull's the director. Um, I believe you shot the entire film on iPhone 13. Mm. Uh, which seems to me to be an incredibly brave thing to do. Why did you choose to do that? And what did it bring to the project? Well, uh, Paul mm. said, let's make a film. And I said, wicked, we need to get a good camera. And he said, why don't you use your phone? I was looking at the camera in the, in the pub and I was playing around with it and I realised that it was a good thing to do because there's a mode called cinematic mode. And you've got two lenses on the iPhone and they shoot uh, together. And it uses that to create depth of field mm. using projection. So you can get really shallow depth of field. So I started playing with it. And then I realized that it also shoots 10 bit, mm. which is good for grading. And it shoots a color space called Dolby Vision. So you get a really wide color gamut and you shoot in what's called logarithmic exposure. Yeah, yeah. Basically all of this mm. means that you can grade it. Yeah. So uh, I did some tests in Bodmin with my kids. And uh, I was showing Paul, and I was like, yeah, you can do something really cool. It looked cool, didn't it? And, uh, and, and that's why I thought, yeah, fuck it, because it's easy. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. and uh, yeah. lightweight. So I then went online and sort of discovered about all this iPhone mm. stuff that you can get for your camera. So yeah. I got like a, you know, an ND filter for yeah. the camera and uh, got like a, a little rig, uh, you know, got some like little reflectors and stuff. And I realized that all I needed was a reflector mm. and a camera and mm. the ND filter and a sunny day. Mm. Characters, the characters that you play. Both of you talk a little bit about how you developed and built those characters for the film. Well, we went with the same names, didn't we, that you'd um, yeah, um, formulated with the first script. Vic, Vic Harper, That's me, yeah. and Buddy, Buddy Benson. Yeah, Buddy Benson, yeah. Because I thought it had a bit of a stunt mm. man name ring to it, like, yeah. um, well, some of the old British... British um, Stuntmen. Yeah, Rocky. There was a guy called Rocky, wasn't That's there? That's right, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
But um, the characters kept, just came through the writing because I, it was would have been this um, disgruntled stunt guy that had been had, had this huge op offer of a TV series, and the guy I'd been a stunt his stunt double for the best part of 10, 15 years. They talked about you know, mm -hmm. seen see through a lot. We've been close friends. And then um, his, his career was waning because of his attitude with alcohol and all the rest of it. And then I was on the ascent. And even though it was late in life, I would have been given my own TV series and he couldn't cope with that. So the idea is he sabotages it mm -hmm. by spreading rumours about me, which gets me cut, not just from TV, but the stunt world, everything. Mm -hmm. This leads in with nothing. And the idea is, they don't talk about it, but the idea is he's lost his home, his family, everything. Mm -hmm. And... That's why he, when he turns up and he wakes up and he's next to him. So both of you have obviously known each other for quite a long time. Did you bring any of that relationship into the film? I'd say maybe, actually, mm. a bit. Because um, I could uh, pick up your bad points, <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> and, and play off them. There's a lot yeah. of those. Because <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, we met in about 1995, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Um, yeah. And, but it was more... Um, we, we're sort of fans of the same kind of movies yeah, from the 70s, particularly American movies, you know, like the Clint Eastwood, the Burt Reynolds, yeah. Steve McQueen's, Charles yeah. Bronson, things. Yeah. And um, I think, in a way, um, Once, Upon a, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood sort of gave us a bit of a yeah, kickstart on it, well, you know, yeah. the relationship between yeah, the two uh, leads Leonardo and that. DiCaprio and Brad Pitt. That's yeah, right, yeah. yeah. Where they have this working relationship and yeah. it's something like symbiotic. That kind of feeling, that 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 energy that comes from stunt work to acting work, because sometimes they have to, mm. you know, they have to do a, a line sometimes. You know? mm. Well, Ben Reynolds started. Like yeah, that's how Ben Reynolds started. Yeah. So we took all those elements we knew about the world of the stunt man, the actors, the A-listers, and having their own stunt men, mm. mm. and and turned into the story. So that was a big influence on the characters that you. Yeah. Was. And Ben, your character, the sort of male Sunset Boulevard. <laughs> well, what, did, what, where did you take your inspiration from for well, that character that's peaked and is on the decline? Well, I, it's kind of weird. I, as an actor, I haven't peaked yet, I don't think. But I mean, um, I, I took all the wrong, all the worst parts about actors because actors get a bit of a bad rap sometimes. Mm. And some actors get a bad rap because they deserve it. Mm. And I thought of those people mm. about how he's, you know, trying to ruin his career yeah. just to make himself better and that yeah. sort of stuff. Because even if he hasn't got a career, mm. he doesn't want his, yeah. you know, misery loves company. Yeah. So this is a question for all three of you, and I'm going to start with Neil Scholes, the yeah. director. Why tell this story now? What, what, what's its relevance? Well, uh, the reality is with filmmaking, it's really hard and mm. you need money and time and resource. Uh, and this is a script which is basically two people in a room mm. and me all with an iPhone. Uh, so it was me, a uh, sound guy, Jim mm. Piper, uh, 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 and my camera assistant was Paul's girlfriend, and two actors. So it, basically, from that sense, it's, you're going out and shooting a film and making mm. a film. Um, and the script, uh, you know, when I look at the script, I say, oh, this is kind of fun. It's kind mm. of a weird scene with these two complete uh, arrogant weirdos <laughs> who are obsessed with a world that nobody else cares about. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and they're yeah. prepared to kill each other or be killed over it. Yeah. So I just thought, well, it's a fun scene. It's yeah. dramatic. But that's quite interesting, that, because we may not care about it, but we're now living in an age of influencers where people want their 15 minutes on Instagram with X million followers. Mm. And, mm. Uh, uh, so, yeah, talk a little bit about that. Yeah. Well, the social media thing was like, you know, we were talking about the blocking and, you know, how we would film mm. it. And uh, we just talked about the idea of live streaming so that we could, mm. you know, it's basically live streaming. The, there's a couple of like things in there when I was editing it, like, you know, when do you reveal it? Do you do, do it as a big reveal or do you just show it all the way mm. through and kind of went with showing it all the way through? Mm. And the idea was, in my mind, when I was cutting it, was that, you know, this character played by Ben is so carried away mm. with his, uh, at the end, as he mm. goes full, full on mental with the mm. gun, he's so carried away in the moment that even though in the back of the mm. mind, I mean, this is something to discuss with Paul, because my first question in the script was... Uh, why would he do this? Like, mm. he's being filmed. The other question I had was the gun. I was like, you know, personally, if I woke up with the gun, I'd start saying, why is there a gun next to me? Mm. Uh, but, you know, Paul went at length talking about this character and how insane this person is, and it made sense, mm. essentially, that this character has the gun, and he forgets about the social mm. media, and he forgets... He's so arrogant and into mm. the moment that he, he, he decides... Uh, the, all of that's irrelevant. He's just going to mm. kill him. He's so, he's so angry and, uh, and pissed off about the mm. universe. Mm. 
from that perspective, from an, you know, as I was yeah. saying, a kind of arrogant, insane character, it works. Mm. And the social media thing, I mean, you know, uh, I just, you know, when I was editing that, I came up with some quick designs, took a load of like symbols and things flying around. I just thought it'd be funny with like emoticons flying around, you know, imagining thousands of people watching this nonsense play out. It was just silly stuff. It's kind of humour mm. added to this surreal moment at the end where he's talking about his, mm. you know, the line where he's saying, you know, I, I had a hit single when I was married to a French lingerie model. I mean, it's just so over the top. Mm. It's kind of ridiculous. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it's just, it, it was just trying to find ways. It was quite challenging actually in the edit mm. you're, you're trying to find a way where you've got this tension building you don't know what the hell's going on and then at the end he goes into this monologue which becomes almost like comedy mm. dark comedy but mm. comedy uh, and the music shifts gear and that's mm. that's quite that was quite a hard balance, balance to find in the edit but you just you you hinge it on the fact that this guy's basically insane mm. Mm. and uh, that's, you, that was my yeah. thoughts on it yeah, yeah. you guys I, I think the same way um mm. when you think about it we wanted a gun in there mm. But this guy, like you said, this guy finds the gun. Mm. Now, yeah, you're probably, I mean, you've also got to factor in that he's actually physically afraid of my character because my character could kill him. Mm. And he really believes that this guy is, because what he's done to him is destroyed his life by calling him a pedo. Mm. Mm. So once you're in a room with somebody and you've told a lie like that, the chances are this guy's going to get upset with you. So yeah. having that gun there, obviously he's just woken up from a stoop and he thinks, has he planted? Is it there? And I mean, do I have a gun? Uh, but it's crazy really because in doing that and because it's a live stream, even though all of that's happened, it could be argued that you've pushed up the actor's mm -hmm. notoriety again rather than subdued it because, uh, you know, nowadays um, people will literally do anything to get that kind of view, there is that, that kind of but, presence mm, in social media. I see, that's the hidden twist. Yeah, go on. meant to yeah, get. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's, bring it out. that's, 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 no, yeah. that's yeah. a valid point. Yeah. You know, that is a valid point. Mm. Murder is murder. You yeah. hope that when the, well, mm. yeah, exactly. You yeah. hope when the guy flies back and the gunshot mm. sounds and there's blood all over his face, yeah. that social media isn't going to go, amazing, yeah. more, mm. but maybe it would. Mm. That's Who the thing, maybe it would. When you think about some of the stuff that's out there on social media, if you go onto YouTube and you, you, uh, you search so anything you could probably find it so in a funny mm. kind of way maybe Paul's character did lose out in the end yeah. and this guy went on to become even more famous and yeah. that's the second film in his day but you know that's yeah. why this, that's yeah. why the story's kind of silly yeah, so because exciting. it leaves yeah. it unended yeah. Yeah, but, yeah. It, but you've had the whole you know mm. dare I say the Alec Baldwin thing yeah. recently yeah. You know, and you had the whole thing with um, with The Crow and um, yeah. uh, uh, Brandon Lee Brandon being Lee, yeah. shot on yeah. camera yeah. as well and, yeah. and, and so that kind of yep yeah. You know, oh my God, this has happened. To... Um, but I also think mm. in, in this situation is that um, your character is so arrogant mm. and fearful that there might, if you notice, as the dialogue progresses between the two, I'm constantly pushing the buttons because I've made my decision because at the beginning, I, I do say, you can do this, mm. you can do this, you can do this. Because mm. I know, I, my mind is, I'm going to end it. I'm going to die, but I'm going to take this son of a bitch down with me, mm. you know? Yeah, yeah. When we were blocking it out, it became mm. pretty clear to me that you, there's like three moments where you get very close and get almost physical and yeah. raise your voice. And yeah. mm. Those were like three mm. moments where this character's going, do I use the gun? Do, do I, I use, use the gun? gun? Yeah. yeah. And the I'm, third one's the moment where you yeah. break. At that point, in my mind, you've completely ignored the fact that the social media yeah. oh, you don't yeah. care if there is a bullet, you're prepared to use it. I, I feel confident when I suddenly realise there's a gun there, in a way. It's almost like I'm playing out a movie scene as well, mm. in my actor head. Do you know mm. what I mean? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of... I'm going to prove myself here. And I'm mm. also, I'm going to mm. stand up for myself against this mm. thug. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. And what I want to say, I want to add, we are not putting down actors and we are not putting down stuntmen, because at the end of the day, the film is dedicated to actors and yeah, stuntmen. Yeah, I was covering I just his bases. To say I was covering his bases. <laughs> <laughs> I love actors. And I love well, I do love actors. Yeah, just to clarify, it is a film and it is a fictitious piece of work. <laughs> yeah, just in case yeah. anybody's yes. upset yes. by the experience. They're both still alive. Yeah. yeah. Just, I love stuntmen just. and I love actors. And, yes. uh, you know, seriously, yes. I just want to But say I love that. the industry. With yes, that's another I mean, film. But this is what brought us together. Oh, yes. Because it's been a while. I've worked with Neil before on a huge project that Neil put together called Warrior. And um, involving lots of, again, post work. Huge. Lots of snow. Lots of snow. Lots, I mean, it's incredible that when that comes out. And I've, I've done a couple of jobs with um, um, Ben. Ben. <laughs> <laughs> I do a lot of Christian, a lot of work with Ben. And, and also oh, no, with yourself. And um, it's wonderful. And we're lucky in this day and age to have the technology at our fingertips to yeah. just film something. And mm. yeah, we might not get it on mainstream, yeah, uh, mainstream TV and all the rest of it. Who cares? We've got the internet. The the um, 
Yeah, the, the, the iPhone plays into that, you know, what you can do with the iPhone. The next short we do is not going to be on an iPhone, just because the, one of the restrictions of the iPhone was you couldn't control the focus and, right. um, you know, it's got like artifacts which are a bit you yeah. know, nasty and stuff. It's amazing what yeah. you can get, but it'd be nice to up the ante a little <laughs> bit. Um, and then we, we also cut it, or cut it and graded it and did the sound mix in Resolve, Resolve Studio, which is like a filmmaking tool in a box and it's 250 quid. And you download it, put it on your computer, and you can make any film in the world. So from that standpoint, I totally agree. We're, we're sort of at a point yeah. where you can do literally anything. Yeah. Mm. But it's still a tricky thing because, like, I'm personally into imagination, mm. as is Paul. Yeah. And it's very, well, it's not easy, but it's very easy to not come up with. Not the 1980s pop group. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's very easy to come up with, and then the yes. alien armada yeah. appear out of the sky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's a real challenge. I find mm. it a real challenge that you're like, okay... The goal is to make a feature film, yeah. the first feature film. But the challenge is, how do you make a feature film which is which is which looks the biz, which is mm. professional production values, which has got the kind of things that you love? Mm. In my case, it's action and things happening, yeah. uh, rather than you know a feature film of literally two people mm. talking in a room. Um, and that that is a unique challenge. Mm. I find that kind of hard. So even though all the technology is there, mm. it still takes time to mm. do. Uh, you know, mm. visual effects films look amazing mm. and they sell well, but it takes time to do that. Mm. So now that the film has been made mm -hmm. um, and you've got your final edit, what do you intend to do with it going forwards? Is it being developed into a bigger piece? Is it proof of concept? What What are your ambitions for the film moving mm -hmm. forwards? Uh, well, the, uh, yeah. for me, the the stunt. Well, you've mm -hmm. just come up with a sequel to the stunt, which is yes. Wicked, where where yes. Ben's character goes off and has an amazing career yeah. and kills more people. Yeah. Uh, but we're, I'm not going to make that. What? I, 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 I um, no. I, it was my first time working with Ben. I want to work with Ben again. I want to work with Paul again. Yeah. And uh, I, for me personally, I'd like to make uh, another couple of shorts. As a, you know, so you're upping mm -hmm. the ante, yeah. and I want them to be completely different. There's a variety, so it shows variety. One of the shorts is connected to a feature film script, which right. is uh, 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 yeah, essentially a film that could be made for several hundred thousand, which is peanuts in the film mm. industry world for anybody that's wondering. But mm. it's something that you that, that could be done realistically mm. and, and really look the biz. Exciting. Um, that's my goal, and yeah. I think you know it's a mutual. Yeah. You know, yeah. 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 Yes. Um, it was a feature originally. I wrote mm. six, seven years ago. Uh, called Exposed, and um, what we're going to do is um, we're going to do a short version of it, and it's going to require uh, a lot of hard work physically on the day. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it certainly ups the ante. Yeah. And uh, again, this is something we can do, and hopefully it will lead to getting the feature. It, it's interesting because I've got to know Ben. I mean, Ben's just made a feature film, which is quite impressive. And, uh, <coughs> you know, Paul's obviously been doing this quite a while, has got a lot of experience as well. And this is my first time in, in really concentrating focusing on independent work. I've been working in commercials and visual effects. I, you know, it's, uh, it, it's my, my foray into it. And uh, yeah, it's quite exciting because the idea of having a short... I think it's very exciting and I think you're in very good company as well when you look at yeah. the big, major global film directors that have been around for the last 20 years that came through the route that you've gone ooh, through. Ooh. And, oh, you're talking about visual effects? Yeah, uh, oh, not right. just visual effects, oh, right. but also commercials. Right, yeah. Bringing that with them ooh. and then applying the those techniques within a, with, you know, across uh, a feature length film mm. um, or a TV series mm. has been very, very exciting. And, you know, from an artistic creative eye, I mean, this is something that we talk about a lot, mm. from an artistic point of view. Yeah, where do you want to be? Who's your audience? Who are well, you? Who are you, my, who are you, who are you wanting to engage with? Ultimately, I don't think mm. that way, which is yeah. probably not the answer you're looking for. I'm, I'm my audience in the sense that I want to make films that I want to see. Yeah. I think that's how everybody yeah. usually is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm particularly interested in adventure. Yeah. You know, as a personal, you know, that's what I like in films. Yeah, well, yeah. it's the same for myself because I know we try to think for the market and I write, you know, I've written like, I mean, I've done a lot of writing and I write, I'm not even writing for a market, I'm thinking, oh, I'd love to see this film. So mm -hmm. I'm writing, I think this is the kind of film I would watch, this is what I'm into. Mm -hmm. And hopefully there's somebody else out there who thinks mm -hmm. the same way. Mm -hmm. So yeah. everything I write, as Neil said, everything I write is what something, you yeah, is what I want to see. For the people who are watching this interview, they may like to get an idea of where they can watch the stunt. Go to Valkyrie Beowulf, <laughs> Uh, Valkyrie Beowulf website and you can watch it or YouTube Valkyrie Beowulf or type in The Stunt Paul Kavanagh Ben Shockley or The Stunt Neil Scholes or short film Paul Kavanagh Ben Shockley <laughs> you've yeah. got quite a lot of that is it on so. Vimeo as well? On Vimeo Twitter Facebook Instagram and YouTube YouTube Brilliant. yeah 
That's great. Well, look, it's been a real pleasure talking with the three of you. Absolutely fascinating project. And I wish you all the best with it. Cheers. So thank you, Neil thank Scholes, you. Paul Kavanagh, Ben Shockley. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Matt. Cheers. Cheers, Dave. Cheers. Thank you. I can still sell a pun. I can do any stunt. Don't break my heart. Yes, honey. Don't break my heart.